I don't think it's changed that much. I think we, the function of art. High art's function is to be in a museum, in a collection, and be part of an economic, economic system and to make a good reputation, uh, you know, of, of whatever for, for, for the artist. Low art, of course, uh, the more common art is to um, disseminate some, you know, some ideas or some piece of beauty or, you know, something for uh, people that are not in the high art world. Eventually, the high art world might see some of the low art and elevate it to, to high art, basically. Um, take murals, for example. I mean, how many murals are there in the world now? You know? Who's our great mural artist? Well, Banksy, all right? But how many others are there out there? Thousands, maybe even millions. So those first guys that did the... Uh, Trains in New York, they're gone. Nothing, zero, zip, because now it's been taken over as a public art expression, et cetera, and eventually, who are we gonna determine is the best? Those are the new Michelangelo's, you know. Somebody came along to the Sistine, but there's only one Sistine Chapel. <laughs> you know, there's only one building. How many walls are there in, in, in the United States and in South America and in Europe that have imagery on it now. Well, high art world, I, I, think, I think it depends on the, the, the name of the artist. And it has, and, I mean, it ha, and has, and the name of the artist is, is, is the ambience around that is fostered in any number of ways. I mean, you know, there's not simply one, one way. But as a, as, a, as a museum director, say for example, I'm gonna buy probably I'm going to want to fill out my collection with, in terms of contemporary, well-known artists. See, the question really comes down to this. If I gave you a choice of two drawings, and one drawing you thought was really, really good, and it wasn't signed, and another drawing you thought was okay, and it was signed by Picasso, which one do you want? And don't tell me you want the one you like the best. You want the Picasso, right? Say right. right. Okay. Because already there is all kinds of, of things around that Picasso, okay? Even if it's not the best Picasso, it's still a Picasso, you know? And Tom Wolf gives this example. He says, what, what if you go along and, and you see this guy and he's all messed up and he's, and he's got some cardboard and he dips his finger in some water and he makes the most beautiful drawing you've ever seen in your entire life, but it goes away in 30 seconds. Are you going to say you witnessed the most beautiful drawing? I doubt it. You know, you might talk about the experience, but you can't share it with anybody. It, you can't sell it to anybody. You can't, it's only an experience. And that's beautiful, but that's not in the art world. You know, we don't really, you know, it's not really, it's, it's about experience, but it's not, it's got to have something there that caused that experience, basically. And this is a whole manner, I think, of, 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 you know, I'm thinking more or less as a collector or as a museum person. I mean, to me, that's kind of the, the ultimate criteria because it's what we see in the museums and it's what we are told is examples of our best in art, you know, that sort of stuff. Whether... I say it or you say it or someone else, but that's basically what, what, what's, what's said.